Hi, I'm Jake Singh, and this will be a short video on how to play Facility. Okay, we'll start with the, uh, the introductory scenario, break and enter. And I'll just find all of the pieces that I need. So I'll arrange the, the board tiles according to the diagram in the book. And each tile has a little red circle, which corresponds to a little red dot on the scenario setup diagram. Next, we have to place all of the, the waypoints and the guards, again according to the, the setup in the scenario book. In this scenario we've got a single objective for the intruder, one, objective, one uh, intruder waypoint, and in fact only a single intruder. Two guards and one alarm. Next, we take the purchase cards and lay them out in sets of two, pairs of identical cards. These are the, per these are the cards that you can buy throughout the game to add to your abilities. And separate from that, we have a deck of six patrol cards, which are the starting deck, which you, uh, which you have to begin the game. Lastly, there's a pair of AI cards. One for your guards. In this, game, in this uh, scenario we use the standard guard and the standard intruder. And each of them have a, an alarm side and a no alarm side with just slightly different colours. Ok, so I'll draw my hand for the first turn, which is three cards off the top of the deck. I've got one patrol card with a value of zero and two patrol cards with a value of one. Each of these is patrol buy cards, which means I can also use them to buy new cards. So for my first turn, for my first turn I'm going to play this patrol buy card. So in moving the guard, the patrol card I've chosen says guards move normally. So in this case, I look at the AI card for the guards and it tells me that I have three action points. I check down the list on the guard AI card, and can we see an intruder? No. Are we alarmed? No. So we move normally. And moving normally means following these arrows, which are the same colour as our guard. These are both blue guards with a solid arrow, so they follow the blue arrows in a clockwise direction in this case. Were they green guards with a, a hollow arrow, then they would follow the green arrows in an anti-clockwise direction. So each card has three action points, so we move each card three spaces in the direction of the arrows. Now you'll note, we're not turning them to face around the corner yet, because they've only just moved into that space. They face the direction that they last moved. In the next turn, when it moves in this direction, that is the point when its facing changes. But for now, that's simply there. The second thing I can do with this particular card is to purchase new cards. This is a patrol slash buy card, and it allows me to use the value generated by this card, which actually incidentally is zero, and spend other cards from my hand for that value in order to purchase new cards to add to my deck. So in this case, both of the other cards I'm using have a value of one. So two cards with a value of one gives me two to spend. Looking at the, the selection of cards I can purchase, I'm going to choose the tight schedule card, which on the left here has a cost of two. As it happens, I wouldn't have been able to afford any of the other cards in the day. So I place that new card into my discard pile in the manner of most deck builders. The next thing I need to do is draw a card for the intruder. So I take a card from the same draw deck. Now, at the top here we have a little shield icon, which shows this is the side of the card that I use for guards. However, on the other side we have a little intruder icon. So I use the card this way up to determine the action that the intruder takes. And in this card I get, must have been the wind. Intruders move normally, but then at the end of the intruder turn, all alerted guards lose their alerted status. It doesn't matter in this particular case because neither of my guards are alerted. The important thing is intruders move normally. The intruder's first check is whether it can perform a close quarters attack. So to perform a close quarters attack, you need to have enough action points for your intruder to move into the space with the guard, so for example we're checking this one, one, two, three, which would leave him with the required one action point to perform the attack. However, when you are checking, 
you may, may only approach for a close quarters attack through safe spaces. And all of these spaces down here are warning spaces because as this guard follows his normal patrol on the next turn, he'll move off in this direction, meaning on his next turn he will see each of these spaces and the intruder cannot move through them to form his close quarters attack. So instead he moves to the nearest safe space to his next objective waypoint, which is this one here. He moves his whole four action points movement to this safe space here, which is the, the one he can reach, which is nearest to his waypoint. I've only managed to draw two cards, so I now take this card and shuffle it to form the new drawback. And then I take the remaining card from there to form my new hand. So, what have I got? I've got a, a trio of patrol cards. I am going to choose this one to play for my second turn. We're playing a patrol card, so each of the guards again follows their normal movement. This guard can only see in this direction, 90 degree field of vision to the front, so he can't see this intruder, so he won't take a shot. He's not alerted, so he'll just continue his patrol around the outside of the board, and the same with this chap. And still, even when he gets to here, he can't see around the corner to see this intruder. He can only see forward. So now I draw a card for the intruder for this turn. Ah, now I've drawn tight schedule, which is actually a card that I purchased earlier, only this time I use the other side of it. I don't get to use that card this round, so instead we get the intruder action of go, go, go! All intruders move normally, but have one more action point than usual. So in this case, because I purchased that card, it also adds to the risk that I'm taking myself, because the intruder action is better than their normal actions on the patrol card. So now he normally has four, in this case he has five action points. This is not quite enough to perform a close combat attack on this chap, because one, two, three, four, five, he only actually gets to this space here. So that's where he moves, there's no alerted guard for him to shoot, no bodies to drag out the way, etc. At the beginning of the next turn I draw back up to my hand of three cards. So I've got three patrol cards again. So, on this turn, I'm going to play a simple patrol card, which allows me to move my guards around again, three spaces each, because again, none of the other conditions are met for any of their other actions. And then I'm going to buy some more cards. One of the other options on the patrol card is that if I want to destroy a card, so in this case, I might choose to get rid of this two-value patrol card, because I've looked at the, the intruder action and it's not very nice that actually gets me an extra value from it. So in destroying this value 2 patrol card, I actually get 3 to spend. And then I can spend my other patrol card as well and choose to buy the look around card, which has a total cost of 4. So then I draw a card for the intruder. And the intruder gets, uh, again, the intruders move normally. At the end of the intruder turn, all alerted cards lose alerted status. So he will move towards his next objective. Now, once he reaches this objective, we need to consult the scenario book. And the intruder's turn ends immediately that he hits the objective, and we need to reconfigure the board for the new waypoint. So the new objective is now escaping the building, and there's a new waypoint just here. And this waypoint is also staying on the board. I'm going to have to shuffle again to start the next turn. So, draw three cards off of the shuffle draw deck. What have I got? I've got a patrol and a patrol and a tie schedule. Okay, so I'm going to play one of these patrol cards. So, each of our cards moves one space three spaces around the outside of the board again. I played this one which allows me to buy some more cards as well as moving my guards. This one has a value of one already. I'm going to spend my tight schedule card to make that value two. And then this card, I'm going to destroy it. It's got a patrol so I can do so. So the value of two is added for four and then I get an extra cut point for destroying it. So now I have five to spend. I'm going to buy the diversion card, which has a cost of 5, and it's really useful. This card will allow me to actually manually control a guard for one turn. So I can choose exactly what it does and where it moves. 
So now all of those cards go into the discard. Now I draw another card for the intruder, and I get a regular stealthy sneak card. It's one of my patrol cards again. Intruders move normally, and at the end of the intruder turn, the nearest alerted guard to an intruder loses their alerted status. So he will move towards one of these two objectives. Now, because they're both equal distance, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six spaces to get to either objective. The player can choose which one he moves towards, but the intruder's normal movement will not allow him to move into spaces the guards can see, or spaces which they'll be able to see on their next turn, warning spaces. So, in fact, he can't move into this space here because this guard can already see it. So he will only move so far as here, and then wait until the guard has gone past before he continues his movement. And that ends the intruder's turn. Okay, drawing my hand for my next turn, I've got three cards off the draw deck, that's the Horus bit. I've got two patrol cards and a look around. I'm going to play the look around card, which states, guards move normally. One guard has 360 degree vision for the duration of their move. So we'll choose this card here. So this one here will just perform a normal movement of his regular three spaces around the board following the arrows. This guard will move here. Now, because he's got 360 degree move, uh, vision, he can now see this intruder. So, first of all, he becomes alerted, and we place this little alerted token next to him to remind us. The second thing we do is that we have to start again from the top of the AI card. So, if we see the guard AI card, the first check is, can we see an intruder? Now, we can. So, instead of following the, the path we've been following previously, we now follow the, the tick, the yes side, and we move to shoot at the intruder. So we roll out two dice. Ah, neither of those actually succeeded in killing the intruder because his armor is four. Neither of the dice are high enough. However, he's taken one step. He's taken one shot. He has three action points, so he has a single action point remaining. Continuing on from here, are we alerted without the alarm being raised? And the answer is yes. So he moves towards the alarm with the intention of setting it off. Now, he's actually already next to the alarm, so he'll spend his final action point to raise the alarm, meaning we flip over all of the alarm tokens on the board, which in this case is only the one. Because the alarm has been raised, we also need to flip both of the, alar uh, the AI cards over to their alarm side, which means that the, the AI flowchart might have changed, and certainly in this case, the guards now have one more action point, which is a very useful thing for them. So at the end of that turn, I have run out of draw cards, so I need to shuffle the draw deck. And draw a card for the intruder. The intruder gets the look around card that I just bought, except he interprets it as a lunge. Each invader may spend up to four more action points if it would allow them to perform a close quarters combat attack. So if the guard were even around here, he would be able to spend all of those extra action points to go around here and, and lunge at him and perform his, his knife attack. As it happens, the guard's right next to him. Ordinarily, as we discussed earlier, the intruder would not be able to move through spaces a guard can see or spaces that a guard could see on his next turn in order to perform a close combat attack. However, after the alarm has been set off, we no longer consider the guard we're attacking when we're looking for that, that safe space check. So, considering only this guard, these spaces are warning spaces. There's no danger spaces at all because he's looking at a wall. So, in fact, he can move through only safe spaces to make this close quarters attack. So he moves here, and then we check his close quarters skill, which is three. Now, because my guard's armor is four, this and this both count as a kill. Now, there's no point keeping the bodies on the board now. The alarm's already been raised, so we just discard it. Okay, draw more three, three more cards for my next hand. Well, got diversion, tight schedule, and patrol. Now, diversion is usually a really good card because it lets me actually manually control a guard and choose exactly what he does. But this turn, because my guard's just a little bit too far away, I'm going to play tight schedule, which gives you an extra action point. Because it, the alarm has been set off already, he has four action points. So he will go. He now has five action points because of tight schedule. So he spends one, two, three, four, moving here. Because he has 360 degree vision, he can already see this intruder. So he starts again at the top of his AI card, 
because he's now seen a, an intruder and now he can see it so his AI tells him to spend his last action point taking a shot at that intruder that's easily enough to kill the intruder as this is higher than his armour of 4 it would actually only need to be a 4 in order to count as a hit because the intruder is now dead there's no more intruders on the, on the board so the guards win <laughs>